welcome to the arena of the supernatural where supernatural is always natural is cut say to this is cut long to this bigger corner who is muslim saba so call you so lowly no man and jim sabin no man abu garanji nye bong which uncle uncle oh yeah get a little into the good cleaner who would is be into the casual last days are the days of glory you can ask yourself how come the last days are the days of glory it because they are pandemics they are uh, gender-based violence there is uh, coronavirus there is cancer there is AIDS uh, all these things they are there but God has decided to say the glory the later glory will be greater than the former that means we are going to experience God like never before I'm telling you I don't want you to miss these days of glory as we were giving you it's a fifth week right now as we are giving you the days of glory online and I'm telling you your life will never be the same again even for this week on Monday we started with Apostle Sandy Lamlambo you saw he spoke about the glory of the Lord the density of the glory of God and the second day it was Apostle Skushangase who spoke boldly and say don't speak what people speak speak what heaven speaks he even touched me when he said don't speak what your church speaks <laughs> I said hey see a fundi some fundi say does it it's my phone this on so and he was emphasizing today it's gonna be a prophet my god William only he's going to speak to you and said you cannot buy you cannot pay for your inheritance your father has already provided for your inheritance your father has already provided for your winning you don't need to fight you don't need to pay you don't need to fight for your inheritance it's already there God has prepared for it so I know you're gonna be blessed tonight I'm telling you these are the days of glory where you are going to experience the tangible presence of the Almighty God doing things like never before the things that we have never seen that's why I am standing right now you remember we would say, oh, gone days I used to sit down and invite you and do things but now I'm standing because it's a countdown to days of glory days of glory Mlazi, days of glory in other days of glory come on Clem <laughs> come on Devon things are happening will you miss these things no you can't miss them you can't miss these days of glory because things will be happening I'm telling you will be unpacking 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 God will change your life your life will never be the same again I'm telling you darkness has passed now it's the day for the day to manifest the glory and the presence of God may God bless you as we go to listen to our Prophet William Undi. Be blessed. Early in the morning, six o'clock, there is a repeat of this. May God bless you. See you tomorrow. Good in is not in All right. I want to prophesy. I want to release a word. And I'm like, all right, you can release a word. And then he's, he's come to this guy. This guy to me looked, sorry, that, sorry, I did not judge the guy because when you're prophesying, you shouldn't judge anyone. Praise the Lord. So he walked to this guy and said to this guy, I see you want a hotel in this place, whatever, this and this. He described a hotel and everything. And I'm like, hey, what is he now doing? This guy doesn't look like a man who can buy a hotel. All right, sorry, some of you now are looking at me with the angry eyes. No. All right, so, so the guy, everyone is suddenly crying. The guy was going behind. And I saw these people behind him carry. the holding him. I'm like, who's these people that are holding this guy? But well, these boat guards. But the guy still looked so simple, but a multi-millionaire. And the guy said, he does the same hotel and he started showing us on his diary how he drew the road, the everything, the, the hotel that he trusted God that he, you give him that hotel. You buy the hotel from, from a, 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 N, C, something because you owned by A, N, C. All right, all right, all right, whatever. But, <laughs> but the point is the accuracy of the prophetic and how God, how God just changes lives. I've seen lives. I remember one day, we, one day we had to, when we had to, uh, one month of revival, my wife said, 
You say these guys that are coming in this and that are coming for the service are bringing your car. Prophesied to me and said, they're going to give you a car. Like, oh, they're flying. How can they give me a car? The people that are flying and they cannot come carrying a car. I said, no, I'm speaking as a prophetess, not as your wife. All right, so, <laughs> so the next thing. <laughs> The next thing, these guys, we had a service, everything, and then I'm like, they, they did not come with the car, they just came with their bags, and there's still one money from, there was they still want me to bless them, you know what I think? <laughs> so, 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 so the next thing, the next thing, this guy stands up and says, you said after the service, everything is done, and he, walk, he walks to me, he's like, hey, prophet God said I must give you such and such car. I'm like, hey! My wife's prophesied. My wife prophesied concerning the car. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, can you help me welcome Prophetess William? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Prophetess Liva William, welcome. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just greet the people and walk. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Church of the Living God. Amen. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, church. We can do better than that. Let Deben know that our Jesus is alive. One more time, let's shout, Jesus. Jesus. One more time, let's shout, Jesus. Jesus. You know, the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, around about verse 7, it says, when Moses came down from the mountain of Mount Sinai, he came down with the glory. But the Bible further, it explains this glory. It says this glory was fading. It says there is an exceeding glory, which is better than this glory of Moses. The glory of grace, the glory of righteousness. And it says we are now established in that grace. We don't have a fading glory like Moses. Come on, church. We don't, there is no time that you have a problem with finances because you are in the glory that excels. We are in the glory that is better. We are, in, we are no longer in the law. We are in the glory that excels. Say, I'm excelling. Come on, shout, I'm excelling. In the name of Jesus. Is there anyone by the name of Nduna? It's like Ndun, like a chief. Oh, there's something to do with a chief in your household. Thank you, Lord. Nduna. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your name is? Ndumiso. Yes. So they call you Nduna? Yeah, they used to call me Nduna. They call you Nduna? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see the, the Lord is about to take you. My brother, you are in that level. Can you see that first step? Yes, I see. Can you see this first step? You are here. Come, 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 come. You were here, but the Lord is about to take you higher. <laughs> the Lord is about to establish you. Going up and down, going up and down, it ceases from today. Yeah. The brother is so shy. I feel for him standing here. <laughs> Father, I just release the grace of God. The grace of God that takes a man from nothing and makes him dwell in high places. The Lord says they shall put you with kings. You shall serve with kings. Praise God. Just go with me in the book of, of Romans 8. Let's start where we ended yesterday. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sweetie. Praise the Lord. 
Romans 8. Or Romans 8 verses 17. It says, and if then, and then if we are children of God, then as, and as of God, and join as with Jesus. And so he that is, he that we, he says, if so be that we suffered with him, that we may be glorified with him. Look at this, the suffering has already happened. Not something that you should suffer now. It says, if we suffered with him, that means on the cross we were included. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he says, on the cross we suffered with Jesus so that we may be glorified with him. You say those that he, he justified, he glorified. Some of us are glorified. Some of you are so scared to use the word glorified. I tell you, it's there in the Bible. He said, if we suffered with him, therefore we shall be glorified with him. Say, I'm glorified with him. So, glorified, let me tell you something. Glorified, that means sharing in the inheritance. That means, that means manifesting him, revealing him. Let the people see Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, he says, if we suffered with him, we shall be glorified with him. Someone say, with him. All right, now, look at this. It says we are joined as with Christ. And the Bible says in the book of, of Colossians 3, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, it says, it says we are hidden. We are hidden in God with Christ. It says our real life is, is no longer on earthly. It's no longer what people see. But our real life is in the spirit. Our real life is hidden with Christ, with him. Someone say with him. Is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. So even when we say with him, that means we are one. It's not, it's not like when I say I'm with my wife, like she's standing next to me. But let me tell you, when, when it says we are with him, one with him, it means we are one, one. That when people see me, they see Christ. Ha, ha, ha. Shah When you, some of you are asking yourself, I wonder if God appears here, how will he look like? If you don't know how he will look like, look at me carefully. You will know how he will look like. Look at my face carefully. Look at my nose carefully. Because my appearing is the appearing of the supernatural. My appearing is the appearing of the invisible God. We are one with him. Someone say one with him. So now, the, now Paul, he says, we are joined as. <laughs> Someone say joined. We are joined as with Christ. Look at this. We are joined. We are not like, uh, like, um, like separated from him. Like he stands here and we stand there. No. We are joined as. We are owning whatever he is owning. We are owning with him. I'm a joined heir with Christ. I am a joint heir. Whatever is his, is mine. Everything that belongs to him is mine. Someone say, it is mine. The kid say, it is mine. I love that song that, that Imam Ruth is saying here. That everything that we are taking over, we are joint heirs. Hallelujah. We are taking over. We are not taking over the things that belong to the devil. We are taking over the, the things that the devil has illegally. Those things are ours. The properties that are occupied by rubbish, they're ours, but the enemy is using them illegally. Some say, I'm taking over what is mine. Because the book of Hebrews, 2, Hebrews 1 verse 2, it says something that is powerful about our inheritance. It says, Christ, it says God in these times, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. By his son, Jesus, whom he has made him the heir of all things. Jesus is the heir of all things. Look at this church. If he's the heir of all things, we are joined heirs with him. That means everything I see on the road, everything I see on the, in the buildings belongs to me. We are joined heirs with Jesus. I want to, my, my point, my, what, my, my, my strength tonight is this, that you may discover your inheritance. That you may just discover your inheritance. You have inheritance and you are crying. 
We need to understand you are a son of God. But by understanding that, then you understand the next thing. That you are a joint heir. Someone say I'm a joint heir. Say so I'm a joint heir. Go with me in the book of you. In the book of Luke 15. Praise the Lord. We are joint heirs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, thank you for making us the joint heirs. Part of the inheritance. That we are part of everything you are doing, oh God. Now look at this. We'll start from verse 11. It says, And he, he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to the father, Give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his livinghood. Do you see that? And after many days, after the young the younger son gathered all together and he took his journey into a far country and they wasted his substance with the with the rush real living now look at this verses 14 and when he has spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to to be in want and then if we, if we go on in the, in the book, of, just continue in, in verse 23. That's when he came back. The father had to do something again. And they said, the father said, And bring hither the fat calf, and kill it, and let, it, let us eat, and be merry. Praise the Lord. Verse 24. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. All right, it continues. In verse, we're gonna we're gonna just touch verse thirty. Praise the Lord. He says, "But as soon as the, as your son, this is now the elder brother complaining." I don't want to read the whole thing, so I'm touching some part. He says, "As soon as your son was come, which has devoured your your living wood with your with your with the hallows." Thou he had killed for him the fattest calf. Verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, at, at ever with me, and all that I have is yours. Now look at that. He said, All that I have is. Look at this. This father had two sons, and the younger of them realized that if he's a son, he qualifies for the inheritance. Then he came to the father and said, Father, give me what belongs to me, what is mine. Then the father, what he did, he divided everything he had. He called everything he had, he divided the both of them. And said, the younger take this, the, the elder take this. And then the younger one, after many days, the Bible school has to tell us after three years, he gathered everything that was his, then he left with it. And then he went and spent it with the, with the protocol living. Then he spent everything. And then in that place, there arose a famine. And then this son said, no, I'm stuttering. I'm stuttering here. I'm in poverty here. I'm, I have nothing. But my father has, has so much with, the, with his servants. His servants are lacking nothing. Let me go to my father. Let me tell you something. Some of you may be in that situation. That you may be have spent your father's inheritance. I'm talking of God here. You have spent God's inheritance in a wrong thing. But I tell you, there is still a chance for you. There is still a hope for you. There is still a hope for you. The thing is to realize that you cannot run away from his love. Because his love is running after you. Are you with me? So you see, this son said, I'm starving here. I'm living in poverty. I'm, li I'm eating with the pigs. Let me rise and go to my father. My father is abundance. Someone in, in this place, you need to realize that your father has abundance. 
Ah, you didn't hear me. Your father is more than enough that even the angels right now, the servants, the angels are servants. The angels are lacking nothing. You are lacking, but the angels are lacking nothing. You need to wake up and realize that you can go to the father. You'll never come to a point where you're big enough that the Father will, will not receive you. You'll never come to a point where the grace cannot save you. His grace wants to help you, child of God. His grace wants you to awaken and realize that you, the Father he has abundance. He wants to lavish with you. He wants to lavish on you. He wants to bless you with his abundance. Are you with me, somebody? So this son said, I'm arising, I'm going to the Father. Come back to your mind and realize that the Father wants you. The Father wants you. And then the next thing, this son, this is no talk of sinners. I know people use that scripture to, to bring back sinners. It's no talk of sinners because this man was, he was a son. He was not like a coin. So after that, before that, there is a parable of a coin. A coin that says the woman lost a, a coin. And when she lost a coin, she had, to, to, she had to, to light up the king to look for the coin. Because the coin had no light. You can't look for something that has light with the light. So the coin is for the sinners. But this one is talking of the children of God. That you spend inheritance in a wrong way. The father still want to bail them out by his goodness, by his love. Someone say, I receive the love. Look at this. The problem is this. What, I, I love what, 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 what the pastor showed us here. That he, the problem is that God has given you. And then you look at the thing and say, oh, I don't deserve it. You want to pay for it. And God saying, I have already paid 2,000 years back on the cross. Come and take it, my son. I don't care what you did. I want to I wanna show you my goodness because it is my goodness that will lead you to repentance. It's not your repentance that will lead you to goodness, but my goodness will take you to repentance. Someone say, I awaken to goodness. So now, look at this. This son, he realized that he really needs his father's help. He had to arise and he went to the father. And the father killed the best calf. And when the father killed the best calf, the younger one now he comes. The, the elder brother comes and he was so angry. You know what? The legalistic people are always angry. They're always angry. They're always angry at each other. They're always angry. Say, why are you prospering? You know what? When in people when people look at you and say, why are you prospering? But I, I, I have been doing this thing and whatever, I don't see success. Why are you successful? You know what you say? You say it's by grace. You just say it's by grace. You can also prosper. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm reminded of these two women that had cancer and they were sleeping in one ward. And one woman got healed. True story. One woman got healed. And when she got healed, the other one said, why did you get healed? My, my cancer was better than yours. And said, she's by grace. It's by grace. It's by, and said, but I fasted more than you. Says it's by grace. Can I tell you, church, we need to awaken to the grace of the living God and begin to see that God wants to lavish us with his, with his grace. He wants to show us his grace. The church, the problem that is, being, is that we've been resisting the grace of God. We've been resisting the grace of God. I remember the days when I was fasting so hard to hear the voice of God. And God one day said, I, I was on the mountain. Fasting so to hear the next thing that I should do. God said to me, stop your fasting and go and hear my voice. I'm like, what? He said, you're frustrating my grace by trying to pay me for what I've already paid. He told me, and said, did Adam fasted to hear God's voice? Did Cain, after killing his brother, fasted to hear the voice? Because God still spoke to him. Church, we need to realize that God has already paid the price and we can hear his voice so freely. We can hear the voice of God. And I tell you something, you cannot pay for your inheritance. It is freely given. It is freely given. It is freely given. 
He has given inheritance. No one can pay for the inheritance. There is no man that can die and leave his inheritance and the children start to work for the inheritance. That will frustrate their father's grace. You have been working hard for the inheritance. The inheritance is only received by faith. By faith. You look at it and say, oh, I don't deserve it. But let me step in by faith. Faith always opposes your feelings of undeserving. Faith always say, I don't deserve, but I'm going to step in by grace. By faith, amen. Through grace, hallelujah. I'm going to step in by grace through faith, hallelujah. Some say, I'm awakened to the grace of the living God. Can I tell you something, church? We need to see God in His grace. We need to receive the grace. Let's stop fighting with grace. God resisted the pride. The pride is like right now. My son, just look at, look, my son is very small. He's, he's, uh, he, is, um, he is three years old. Imagine my son, he breaks the window in the house. He never done that, but imagine that. Break the window. Then the next thing I come and say, hey, what have you done, man? And then he says, no, I'm going to sort it out. Don't worry, daddy. Then he started touching the, those glasses. That's what you've been doing. You have messed up and you're trying to fix it instead of saying, Lord, help me. Yeah. You are carrying the thing that you, the father need to carry for you. You need to wake up and realize that your father wants to help. Imagine, I, every time I, when I buy my son a toy, this is what he does. He always say, ah, if I try to teach him, he says, I know, daddy. I know. Right now, right now, before we came here, he broke his iPad. He broke his iPad. They're like, hey, when? What is happening with you? He said, don't worry, we buy another one. <laughs> And, as, and I had to withdraw from anything that, from something that I wanted to do. I had to withdraw with the minute he says, don't worry, we'll buy another one. I'm like, this man is hearing my language in the house. And he's like, don't worry, we'll buy another one, we'll get another one. He's not worried. But the children of God, you are living with so much worry. That's pride. The father wants to help you. And you're like, no, I can carry it. I will solve it. It's pride. And God resists the pride. But he gives grace to the humble. Grace is for the humble people. The people that say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. When was the last time you prayed such prayer? You know, some of you never even prayed a prayer, help me, Lord. You always say, I know, I'm a man of faith. Ah, I say, help me, Lord. You get what I'm saying? You can say, help me, Lord. He will help you. He will show you what to do. He will help you. Some of you, you have so much pride when you come before the presence of God. You have so much pride. Oh Lord, I have fasted 20 days. I have fasted 70 days more than what Jesus did. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You need to harm yourself and say, hey. You need, to tell, you need to tell the Lord and say, hey, I tried to go out 10 days of fasting and then the next thing I was, I was missing that cheese. And just be open with your father. Why are you acting like you're acting a movie? When is your father? You're not acting a movie. This is your father's stuff. Your father is like, hey, my son, I want to help you. I love you. We are not acting a movie. I love you. This is not a movie. Christianity is not a movie. You have a father, a real father, who loves you, who cares for you, who died for you, who laid down his life just for you to give you life and peace. Why are you acting a movie before God? Praise the Lord.
Like some, some brethren, you know, when I remember, I remember those days when we come together as brethren. You know the Bible says come together as brethren. When you come to, together as brethren, then we start showing our pride. Then like, oh, William, you close with prayer. Oh, Jehovah Jireh. When I'm Simagate, Nyaku to me, sir, Gulukula Matam Sang. Oh, when you catch Sano Abambegi, and then you and then Nanyum Tem and Yum Tem, I don't know, you know, understand what I'm saying. Nanyum, me as a limpon, you may as a limpon. And then one day said, hey, stop acting your movie before me. I want you, I, I want you to speak like a son. Yeah. Speak like a son. Look at this. Look at this. This is my voice. This is my voice right now. And then when it's come to prayer, we worship you. <laughs> what a wonderful God you are. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh came with Moses and helped him. <laughs> May you come for me now. <laughs> I need your help, Lord. <laughs> I bless you. <laughs> I need that car. <laughs> I need that wife. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, 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 hey. Stop acting a movie before God. Be a son. You can't pray like that. Why don't you use your voice? Your father loves you, man. Church, I tell you, you need to come to God and understand this father is waiting. He want to love you with the blessing. Now the prodigal son is coming back to the father. He's walking slowly, slowly. And the father saw him from afar. He could not see father. That's why he was walking slow, so slowly. But when the father saw him, he ran. The father reigned. Imagine God, he, 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 look at this, God is running more than you are running. The father reigned to him. And the father said, he sp instead, of, instead of putting him under hearing, the father put him under blessing. If some religious folks were there, we're going to say, why are you putting him under blessing instead of putting him under hearing? Because we should first hear his story. The father did not even listen to his story. He listened to the goodness. The father said, your father said, kill the best calf. Give him the best garment. Put on the best sandals. Amen. Say, that's my father. And the father kissed him. Why? The father was showing him goodness. Church, we need to understand that we have a father who want to show us goodness. I don't know what you did. Those things, today the father want to show you his goodness. It is the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. Praise the Lord. Someone say, I receive your goodness. Say, I receive your goodness. Say, I receive your goodness. Say, I receive your kindness. He is kind and you are resisting his kindness. Every time I'm like, oh God, I'm going to fix it myself. No. You've already messed up. Let him fix it. Let him fix it. You've already broke the window. Why are you trying to carry the broken pieces of the glass? Trust the Father to do it for you. You will injure yourself even more by trying to fix your life. You will never fix your life. Only the Father can fix you. That's why now Paul, he came and said, Hey, I have messed up in the past. Now it is no longer I that lives, but Christ. The life I now live by in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. My faith becomes useless in the presence of God. I need his faith. I need his strength. But here is the point. Verse is 31. The elder son came and the father said, All that is mine is yours. Church, we need to understand that everything that belongs to God is yours. 
But your problem is that you are simply saying, Oh, Father, give me a cup. He says, Hey, don't you know everything that is mine is yours? Say, It is mine. Say, It is mine. Say, It is mine. Church, if we can understand that the things that belong to God are ours, we will be responsible over the Father's business. Because those things are ours. Everything that belongs to God is yours. Can I, do you know the things that belong to God? I'm talking of all those things you always see outside. The buildings that costed millions of dollars. God saying, oh, that is mine. That means it is yours. Ah, yeah, yeah. I don't care where you stay. I don't care what you have. I just want to tell you, you have Jesus. All that is his is yours. One thing, one thing about me, I've refused in my life to be threatened by anything. I know who I am. I, I know who I am. That when I walk in a place, when I walk, when I walk in a place, when I walk in the presence of the ministers, when I was in India, the son of the president, the son of the president asked, asked to meet me. This is, this is a top man, you know. When you talk of the, in India, when you talk of the son of a president, you talk of a big guy, you not talk of a small stuff. The son of the president, he begged to meet me. And when he met me, he's like, hey, why are you so? He came to my hotel room. The pastor there, he brought him to the hotel room. And this is the thing. The son said to me, he said to me, oh, the son of the prime minister, sorry. He said, this is what he said to me. He said, why are you so confident like this? I'm like, hey, I, I, everything that is my father's is mine. Everything that belongs to, to my father is mine. Nothing, everything that I see that we have is belongs to my father. Are you with me, church? You need to understand who is your father, church. That your father owns the whole world. The father owns the whole world. That whole world that you always see belongs to your father. It belongs to your father. It belongs to your father. It belongs to your father. One thing that really touched me one day, we were flying to, I was flying to India. And in the business class, there were just three people, three people. And, and, and the next thing, one thing that I always, that I, I really, this is the thing that really always moved me, that in the business class, those international flights, that the business class, sometimes you pay 100,000 rand, sometimes you pay 200,000 rand. You only found these, you found, only found like all these German people and stuff like that. And they're like, hey, wait, 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 I get what I, I get what I'm saying. You find these German people and they, they own businesses. Where are the children of God there? And they don't even talk about God. You find these people in the, and and then the next thing and the, the funny thing that I always say, I always say to my wife, I say the funny thing about business class, you found there is only these. Sorry to say why, <laughs> sorry to say that, and then you found all of them are men. I say where is our, where are the women? Hey, we need to wake up, church. We need to wake up and own this substance and own these things for our Father. Amen. We need to wake up. And the next thing, you know what? I was walking like a king inside, inside a plane. I was walking like a king. And then this guy walked to him and I'm like, hey, your name is so and so. He said, I know you saw it on the boarding pass. I said, no, I did not sit on the boarding pass, man. I'm prophesying. I'm a prophet. And the guy like, a prophet. So he started to think about Allah. He started thinking about all those people. So now the guy, I said, I'm a prophet. I said, look at me. The guy started shaking. Started shaking. And like, I thought maybe the guy was shaking under the fear that maybe he is like uh, Allah visited him or something. <laughs> but he was shaking under the anointing. <laughs> I 
I'm like, oh God. And then I went back to my city because you knew, you know, because I was going to suspect that maybe I'm, I'm carrying a gun. I'm pointing at the gun. And then the next thing, the next thing, this, this, uh, this lady, the host, the air hostess, come to uh, to this guy like, hey, what's the problem with you? And he says, uh, and the guy like is shaking and, mm, mm, and then. Uh, <laughs> the guy in the bag, the guy is sitting behind me, the guy is sitting behind me. And then, you know, like what they say, they always they say in the plane, that um, if you suspect anything, tell, quickly tell the people. It's because they are people, the terrorists, you know. So now they came to me like I'm a terrorist. That the guy is expecting something, but he can't speak. So they're like, hey, come this side. They started searching me and everything. And I'm like, no, I'm not carrying any drug. I'm not carrying any gun. I'm, I'm just, a, I prophesied to the guy. I'm a prophet. Like, no, listen, this is not a prophetic class. This is, this is a business class. You need to be careful. <laughs> So I went back to the seat like, but it belongs to my father. <laughs> Can I tell you, Change? We need to realize that these things, they belong to our father. And he said, all that is mine is, all that is mine is, all that is mine is. Church, look at Abraham, the life he lived. Can I show you? Just go with me in the book of Haggai. Haggai 2. Haggai 2 verse 8. Look at what it says. And the silver, it says silver is mine. You said all that is mine is. Hey, it's now you're saying the silver, it says the silver is mine. And it says all that is mine is. Yeah, so put your name there. The silver is yours. <laughs> That's why you see gold mines are called mine. Ah, you didn't hear me. They are called mine. Silver mine is called a mine. They are taken from this scripture. Hey, all that is mine is yours. So if you look at the mine and say, hey, all that is a mine is yours, mine. <laughs> You only say there is a gold mine. You put your gold mine. Yes. Mine. <laughs> mine. Church, I tell you, all that is his is mine. It says, gold, silver is mine, and gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Now, God is telling you that all these things are his. They are his. And then now look at this. Go with me in the book of Psalms 50. Say, all that is his is mine. Psalms 50, praise the Lord. Are you still here or you're already, you're already driving home? Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 50. When you get there, just shout, Amen. Amen. Verse 10. Now look at this. It says, every beast of the, of the forest is, every beast of the forest is, is mine. So that means it is yours. Amen. And he says, the cackle, and the cackle upon a thousand hills is mine. Church, I tell you, there are things that God says are his. And the whole world is his. But now you specify and say silver, gold, and cackle is his. He specifies in the Old Testament that it belongs to him. So that means it belongs to you. And now look at the life of Abraham. Go with me in the book of Genesis 13 and see the life of Abraham. Someone say, take this word. Genesis 13. He says, the silver is his, gold is his, cake is his. Amen. Now look at Abraham verse 2. Genesis 13 verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in, in cackle and in, silver and in, gold. Why? He had the things that belong to God. Everything that belongs to God is yours. You need to wake up and begin to realize how rich you are. How, I tell you church, the glory of the Father need to be seen in our lives. That when people come to our lives, they see the glory of God. 
When people come to houses, they see the glory of God. When someone sits in a car, they say, I'm seeing the glory of God. Amen. So I'm born for it. Can I tell you something, church? I know some of you, when you say such, when, when you hear such things, you get offended. You think these are offensive words. They're not offensive words. This is prosperity. This is what God wants for his children. This is success. This is what God wants for his children. He says he wants everything that is his to be seen in your life. Abraham, he had silver, he had gold, he had everything that God said it is his. Everything that God said is his, Abraham had it. Church is time for us to have everything that belongs to God. Everything that God says is his, you say it's yours. Are you with me? Everything that God claims in his name, it's yours, child of God. It's yours. What is God saying he has? Everything. So all those things are his, are yours. You need to wake up and begin to realize what Jesus did for you on the cross. That he made everything available for you. He made the prosperity of the Father to become your prosperity. How will the world see that God owns it if we don't have it? Are you with me? How will the world see that God has it if we don't have it? The church, even today, we're still living, living like beggars. Are you with me? But we need to come out from that church and realize that the Father has made us rich. Everything that is His is ours. When, when you walk in the mall, you know what? Declare that mall is in, in your name. Declare it in your name. You say, this is my building. Hallelujah. You decay it in your name and say, this is my building. Even if you don't have money in your pocket, even if you don't drive, start decaying those things. Why? Because they are yours. Decay things that are yours. They say, it's those things that are yours. Decay them to your name. Call them to your name. Are you with me? Call them to your name. Stop, stop crying. Stop calling, stop calling yourself a beggar. You are not a beggar. If you remember my message yesterday, stop acting like you're a beggar. You're not a beggar. When I travel to the United States, you know when you come, when you, when you, when you, when you, in people in the United States, this is what, this is what they believe with Africa. They think we are a poor, we are poor people. They think we are junk. I tell you, I'm serious. They don't know there are people like you here. They don't know that there are people like, that are rich like you. They don't know that you are loaded. So they think we are writing on, on lions. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know what news they, 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 they read today. They see. But let me tell you something. I, this is the thing. The first time when I was there, the first time when I was there, everyone thought this is a poor, chunk guy. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. I'm a prophet of God. I'm a prophet of God. Don't think that someone who's coming from Zimbabwe, who's coming from Africa, is a poor man. We are, we are sons of God. Even you here in America, you can prosper. And you know what? This other, this other man, he portrayed, he portrayed like, a, like Africa is really a poor nation. And you know what? Like, uh, imagine we sitting there with my wife and every time we're hearing those things and, and we'll, we'll, people looking down upon us. And the next thing I'm like, oh, let's pack our things in the hotel and disappear. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Then the next thing, you know what we did? You saw the pictures. We posted the pictures. We're sitting on business class going back home. Like, no, you cannot be criticizing people. Are you getting what I'm saying? I said you cannot be criticizing people that of God. If you're criticizing people because they're coming from Africa. We are reloaded people because we belong to God. If someone in England can prosper as long as they belong to God. Someone in, it doesn't matter your location. What matters is your father. Someone say it doesn't matter my location. You can prosper anywhere. We started a church in the township, in the township deep, in a, in a place that has 
hopes. That is none of poverty. That is none of poverty. And our ministry has helped other ministries. That ministry from the township has yes, helped the ministries that are in top places. We believe in that everything that belongs to God is ours. Just from faith, we move to manifestation. From glory, there is manifest, manifestation, church. Are you with me? And I remember one day, we, um, when, right now, when, um, when I traveled the last time when I was in the U.S., God said to me, I, he said to me, I, was, I met Bill Johnson, and then we are preaching his board meeting and everything. And then God said to me after the service, he said, I want, to bless, I want you to bless Bill Johnson with $10,000. I'm like, God, this is a rich guy. Why will I bless him with 10000 Amen. And God said, you are not a poor man. You are a rich man. Amen. Do it. So I was like, oh, 10000 I'm like, God, oh, 10000 Sure, you want me to leave it here in America? He said, yes, leave it there. And the next thing, I get in my hotel room, and then in the hotel room, this is what happened. Um, I... I could not sleep thinking of that. God just speaking to me and said, "Give Bill Johnson ten thousand. I want you to, I want you to give him ten thousand, ten thousand, not ten thousand rand, ten thousand dollars." So I was like, "Oh God, oh God, oh God!" And then the next thing, the next thing in the morning when I woke up, I was like, oh, I've, I've heard the voice of the voice of from God. Bill Johnson is supposed to bless me ten thousand, and God said, "No, you are supposed to bless him." <laughs> and the next thing, you know what? Our I, I, I walked next to him, I stood next to him, and then he said, to, and then I said to him, I looked at him, I said, I'm like, oh God, I see his, his eyes look like he's ready to bless me 10,000. <laughs> and God said, I said, you bless him. It's not about where you're from. You're not a baker here in America. That's what God said to me. You are a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Then I looked at him, I said, hey, Bill, I, 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 he was standing next to me, I'm like, hey, brother, listen, God said I must give you 10,000. And then he said, hey, praise God, will people accept your money here in this next nation? Do they convert your money, you know? I'm like, no, he said I must bless you with $10,000, just put, just put your hand here so that people cannot see. So I gave, I passed the 10,000. I know some of you say, why are you sharing that testimony of giving? No, I did not give to a poor man. He says, when you give to the poor, don't shade. But I gave to you, I was sowing to the anointing. So I passed the 10,000, and when I passed it, he's like, hey, you're a man of the spirit. Then he touched me like this. The power of God that fell on me that day, I felt so free. I felt so free as a child of God. Amen? Amen. And you know what? The next thing, how God that day opened doors. How God just opened doors, just things started happening. Because I did, not, I did not step in America and portray myself like a beggar. You know, some people, when they go to a place like, oh, we're trying to build a building, can you help us with money? And then they portray Africa like beggars. Let me tell you, we're not beggars. We are the richest people. Amen. As long as you belong to Jesus, you are the rich people. I tell you, you can finance people even in America. You can, you can make projects that will help people. You can make projects that will help people in England. Amen. Praise God. Say, I'm a rich person. Say, everything that belongs to my Father is mine. Say, I am blessed in the name of Jesus. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I walk in abundance. I walk in more than enough. I am blessed. Say, I'm not a beggar. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. I see this lady is like, um, I see this lady is like you're working for, with the people in prison. You're working with people in prison, um, the correctional service. Is there someone who's working with the people in prison, correctional service? Yes. Are you sure? You are sure. All right, lady, I tell you, God, God is going to do something. I know December is a big month for you. Like it's for everyone, but for you is a big month. Yeah, I see God is going to. 
God is going to do something incredible and something great with your life. That is change, something is changing today. God is putting things in order in your life. You've been waiting and God saying, I see December is a big month for you. And like everyone, December is a big month, but for you is a big, big, big month. God is changing everything in your life. God is changing everything in your life. I see the light, where there was no light, the light is going to begin to shine. Amen. It's going to begin to shine. Are you married? You're not married. All right. <laughs> so where there was no light, the light will begin to shine. I see it's like, uh, I see it's like, um, what's happening in December? It's my bed month. Your bed month, December yes. 24. Huh. Amen. Right. Amen. 1972. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Look at this lady. God is saying it's not late. Amen. Even if it's not late now. God is saying, you're still going to get married now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This, you're going to see the greatness, the goodness of Jesus. There's going to be power in your life. And, you, and there is something about you and ministry. God has called you in ministry. You are a woman that is called to yes, preach the gospel. You are, you are a great woman in the ministry. You are a great, you are so supportive. You, you really love your leaders. You really love your pastors. And God's saying, I've, I'm honoring you with the same grace. Yes. With the same grace. Thank I you, honor Jesus. you with the same grace. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, men of God. Lord Jesus, right now, I release the grace, the anointing. Oh, oh, power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power in Jesus' name. Power. Power in the name of Jesus. I release you right now. Right now. The power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Power in Jesus' name. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. May you experience the glory, the glory, <laughs> the glory of the Holy Ghost, the glory, the anointing of the Spirit of God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, the peace of God, the peace of God to reign in your life. Everything you lost in the past, God is restoring now. Everything you lost in the past, God is restoring now. Everything you lost in the past, God is restoring now. Restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. Everything that belongs to God, I declare, it is yours in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.